and it's time for us to talk nutrition. And um, I've been joined by our favorite nutritionist. Uh, she is Akusia Kunedu Yadom. She's a state registered nutritionist. And she's going to help us to understand, you know, the challenges. This is 2020, and, you know, there's a lot of resolutions that we're making and everything else. And a lot of us have um, young ones, children, and we have challenges with their feeding. And, you know, you find that uh, they pick on food and they don't want this and they don't want that and all of that. How do we deal with it? How do parents deal with this? Um, so, Akosu, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Kweoku. I'm fine yourself. I'm very well, thank you. It's good to have you here. So let's talk about picky eaters. Hmm. Um, first of all, what are picky eaters? And then why do <laughs> some people just become picky eaters? Okay, so they are fussy people. They are very choosy they are very selective so they would want to eat this and wouldn't want to do that they would want to take this and wouldn't want to take that no matter what you think it is for them it could even be me as a professional meeting them and going like okay you have to be taking this that that and they still mm. wouldn't want to accept it because we realize that for children before they hit age 15 it is difficult to convince a child when they set their minds that this is what they want, research says that before age 15, so from zero all the way to 14 or somewhere 15, it is really difficult to mm. convince them as to changing from what they know to that. So that is what we term as a, a, a picky uh, eater. eater or picky okay. eating. Okay. They pick and they eat what they want to eat. Mm. You can't force it on them. Okay. Yes. And it's a normal thing. So I, I would tell all moms, it's something I've had people send me messages on. I've had a bigger platform. They were like, um, we, we struggle with this. So we'd, we want you to come in and at least help some of the mothers. There are mothers around me who are complaining. A closer friend of mine is complaining seriously about her son. And it's normally um, children who are migrating from the breastfeeding, okay. exclusive breastfeeding, to okay. the ACFs, what we call the appropriate complementary feeds. Mm. So they are used to something which is very liquid. Mm. And now you are moving to something which is semi-solid um, um, or... Yeah something that is period it takes time before it sinks in so the conversation will cut across it will dwell on these children it will also dwell on our uh, six four normally with picky eating in children it is a serious thing when they are between age two to four mm. that is when it is so serious you can have a child still eating from the feeding bottle and yes so from zero two to four it's very serious or can be very very critical then it moves all the way to somewhere probably before 10 or even beyond. That's mm. why I said that they really mature when they are in their adolescent age, yeah. like 15. So is it just an issue of texture, right? You know, you're eating, um, they're used to the liquid of the, the breastfeeding, um, and now they're getting into more mm. solid stuff. Is it just an issue of texture and that they are not comfortable with it? Or there's something more... Um, genetic that d predisposes them to reject certain foods. Okay, so they are they are, they are children. Even myself, um, I am. I was so comfortable. Now I'm okay. Mm. I was so comfortable with rice and soup. But as soon as you add that spatula and make it rice balls, it just turns me off. Okay. I could kick it off mm. or tell you I don't like it. Mm. I wasn't eating rice balls when I was young because I was like, ah, how can you cook rice and then you make just you, you, a, you, you, you just make ball. something like banku out yeah. of this. Have I told you I want to eat banku? So sometimes it has to do with the texture. Mm. And we all know that it is very, very difficult with some of us when it comes to introduction to mm. new staffs. Research says that Kweku, you would have to try something 8 to 15 times when it comes to feeding of children before okay. they can accept it. But mm. you realize that sometimes you do it one, um, twice. Okay, the first time the baby didn't like it. The second yeah. time, same. The third time, same. And so we, we draw the conclusion that, okay, baby is not comfortable yeah. with this. But yeah. you would need to try it. It is between 8 
to 15 times before their bodies can accept it. It's just like, Weku, the first time you saw frog legs on the menu, mm. what, what, what was the impression you had about, about the food? No, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of an inquisitive person, you know, so even when I heard about frog legs... You wanted to know. Now I'm curious. Yes, I want to see what You were an adult, like and, yeah. but let's, let's come to a child. Do you get yes. it? This is something they are so not used to, mm. and we as parents, normally we co because of what we know is sitting in there or what is deposited in it, we want to pump it into the child. Mm. But a child is not mm. like you. Yeah. Hasn't been taking kokonte, hasn't been taking um, granite soup, hasn't been taking palm nut soup. Mm. So you don't expect the child to embrace, embrace it like it, the way like, you yeah. embrace it. So mm. it's a gradual thing. Don't beat yourself up. I have some points, the do's and don'ts. I, I will be glad if we could go through yeah. so that we, we will that. fill ourselves in with the conversation. So um, please, if you can have it screened. Okay, so the first one, know that, that is a point to note. Mm. The first one, know that it's a developmental thing and it's normal. Okay. Yeah, so you'd have to tell yourself as a mother that, okay, this is what I am in for. Mm. Once baby has moved from breastfeeding, I'm going to struggle a bit because the first food baby baby was introduced to yes. was my breast milk. Mm. And now I want to introduce, let's say, otto or a yeah. I want to introduce mashed yam with, with lye soup mm. and salmon to baby. You don't expect it to be an easy transition. thing. Transition. Yes, an mm. easy transition because okay. for some of the children, they will eat, throw up, they will eat, keep throwing up because it's something that is so new to mm. them. It's something they so don't okay. know. And okay. the second one, don't blame yourself as a parent. Like I said, it is not your fault. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a transitional thing. And we know that change will need to take some time. And like I said, you need to try it over and over. You don't do it four times and go like, oh, may the man win this so mm. then I am quitting. You don't quit until you have gotten to the between 8 to 15. Okay. Then a professional can come in because that way we need to know where the problem is. It could be that... The, the child naturally is not tolerating the feed. It mm. could be many things, allergies and other things. And sometimes the reason why we have these issues has to do with the fact that we do introduction of these foods late. Okay. So at six months, you'd have to make sure complementary feeds come in. Okay. You meet mothers who will do exclusive and still continue until eight, the eighth month, the ninth month, tenth month, some could go even one year. No, I know someone who's insisting on doing two years. No, but the, the person can't do exclusive for two years. Well, no. It, it's, a, it's a very... No, 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 no. I found no, it very traumatizing. Hey, you wouldn't even have but your yeah. body. It drains you a lot. So normally when you have mothers who are even breastfeeding, mm. we tell them for the normal one to um, main three meals and in betweens, we, even when you are pregnant, we tell you to add one meal to it. When you deliver, you have to add another meal because every two hours you need to be putting baby to the breast. Mm. And it can really drain you because you don't time yourself and go like, I'm giving you breast yeah. milk for five minutes. Babies feed on demand and you allow baby to feed until... As long as they yes, until they are, they are done. So if yeah. you have a baby who can really drill you, baby can suckle for 30 minutes. So mm. if every two hours you... you you mm -hmm. want to follow the normal protocol, yeah. you have to feed 12 times in a day. That is below six months. If you are doing this and you are not eating work, work you can imagine what will happen to your <laughs> wife. <laughs> yes, and the third one, don't give up on that new food. Like I said, it takes up to 8 to 15 times for a child or for, yes, a to child accept. to accept the mm. food. So you don't do three and go like, I have given up. Okay, so I, had, I have a friend who said that the way they were brought up at home is the way that he was bringing up his kids, right? And it's basically whatever is set in front of you, you eat. You must eat. There's nothing like, oh, I don't like. Yeah. You will stay at it till you eat it. Okay. Now, is that not torture? Hmm. It isn't. Kweku, even with our Thursday discussion, when I came on Bernard's show, I spoke about it. You need to be a role model as a mother, as a father, as a parent or a caretaker. So I am forcing the child to eat bananas and I come home with a, with a, with a, a bottle of, let's say, a fizzy drink or carbonated drink. There are homes. I, I met a lady. 
She said the kids don't know certain drinks, so when they go out and they are serving them, they go like, "Mommy, what is that?" Mm. Then she 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 goes like, "Okay, you can have this," but in her home or in the house, she doesn't keep those things. Yeah. Kwaku, okay. they, they, they grow up with us. You are their mom, you are their dad. Yeah. And so definitely, if this is what they are seeing home, mommy always goes to the kitchen, pick banana and starts mm. eating banana. Definitely you have a, a positive influence on them. It is not torture. In a nice way, even as a parent, you have to make sure the child comes to the table hungry. But sometimes we are in town, we are buying them this, that, that. They come home, you want them to eat, eat and hey. It looks like and they, they already are filled they with, are already filled with the, the pastries, the okay. stuff you bought for them. Okay, so my question... The torture, let me answer that yes, one. Go on. You have to take something from a child if they are not eating. It's a healthy way to make sure they are eating. What you do is that, let's say, their favorite um, 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 snack or they love chocolate. You can, you can lobby with them. Mm. I have to make sure you are eating because you grow up eating the granola soup and omutu. Yeah. You grow up eating the tea zet. You grow up eating the banku and okra stew. So I have to lobby with you just to make sure I, 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 I attach what we eat as a family mm. to, to you as, as, as a boy because you grow up, up to yeah. be an adult. So, okay, if you are able to finish your plate, I'm giving you chocolate. Okay. So you can reward you the reward child with something they actually yes, like. Yes, you reward and then take away okay. if they don't finish their plate. In a okay. very nice way, don't yell at them because that way it will become like when it's meal time looks like it's, it's like war. It's a painful experience. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so what about when you're in town, mm -hmm. right? Um, you've had to let's say spend 4 or yeah. 5 hours in town. Uh, the child seems to be hungry. They are asking for things to pick on. Um, how do you balance the need to bring them to the table hungry and the fact that they are having hunger pangs before we Thank come to table? So much. Thank you so much for this question, Kwaku. So you realize that especially with mothers who come to weigh in, normally they come and maybe there is a delay. Okay, so at 12, I plan to feed my child you should mm. have meal times thank you so much for this question you should have meal times and make sure you stick to it you should have your meals together as a family but for reason a b for instance i needed to there was a need for me to bring you to weigh in yes then i had to feed you at 12 but 12 we are not done and so i am sure we are getting home by 1 mm. 1 30 mm. or even 2 i need to make sure baby is cushioned before the next meal Probably I don't want to buy anything for baby outside. Mm -hmm. I want baby to come home and eat. You need to make arrangements as far as cushioning is concerned. So that is where some of these meals we, we, we give to children as food. Okay. When they are moving to complementary fees, something like Cerelac. Cerelac shouldn't be served as a food. It is something you can give at this moment mm -hmm. when you wouldn't be in the house. Okay. So, Feed the child on the next meal. I am vouching for we feeding, we feeding our babies with what we eat. You introduce sugars to the children, and when you want them to take soups and they are not taking, you, you look frustrated. Mm. You've, you've, their, their taste buds are so used to certain things you give them. Yeah. It has a lot of preservatives. It has a lot of added sugar. And so, as far as their taste buds are concerned, you've done something to mm. it. So, it's very difficult if you now want me to take soup, which has nothing sugar in there. <laughs> so, these stuff we feed our children with should be what we are using to cushion them. And I've given an example for mm. that. You realize that when they come for assessment, they were doing so well when they were exclusively being breastfed. Yeah. But at age two, three, four, where I told you that the, the peak... The picky eating is really, really serious. Mm. They decline. Some of them, their weight can fall so, so, so much that their mothers become terribly worried. Mm. That is what is causing that. Because, oh, Nini, they need food. <laughs> they don't need some of these things we are giving them. And so you realize that even as a dad, even as a mother, when you are eating and you slot some of the food into the child's uh, mouth, they eat. Mm. Because I can see mommy eating at all. 
yeah. and mommy is giving me a talk. Yeah. But I ask moms, you are eating fufu and you are giving something white to the child. Do you think mm. they are they are not sensible mm. to see that ah uh, it looks like you are giving them something different? That's it can pass for it anything works. and it's difficult to convince mm. them to be eating. Okay. So Cerelac, hmm. okay, of course it's just it's a brand, but we're talking about that whole sweet cereal mix. sweet cereal mix pasty cereal mix um we should avoid it completely i'm not saying avoid it you can it can be a go-to okay when there but is an emergency it's usually provided as an as a whole meal hmm. on its own yeah what's the challenge with that should we not take it as a full meal on its own or like you said just as you know a stopgap measure on our way to going to the main meal have a little of this you've so answered it so it's like a do. snack okay and even a snack i sat here saying and i always sit here i did that thursday saying that we should make sure we are pumping fruits and vegetables but even me as an adult i want cereal i know yeah. I, I took i have one sitting <laughs> in my fridge but i wouldn't put um, sorry, like in place of my lunch. Okay. And so I shouldn't do the same for, for a child. child. It's supposed to cushion the child. Mm. In a month, you go for weighing once a month. Okay. So once a month, I, I couldn't carry your lunch along or I don't want to feed you in public. Mm. I don't want somebody to know what I'm feeding you with. Okay. And I plan to get home at 12.31. But unfortunately, there was a situation and so I'm getting home at two. Yeah. I don't need to make you go hungry. Okay. And mothers, please allow children to go hungry. Don't be feeding them. When those hunger pangs like you spoke about happens, it means that the children are really ready for the next meal. Okay. But, right. So I have two questions. Yeah. One is, how much can you stretch this thing in terms of the hunger pangs? Because at a point, you feel guilty. It's like, yeah. look, I'm starving the child. You know, they've been crying for the last hour. They're hungry. You shouldn't even let the child cry. Okay, so the, so at the point when they are crying, you definitely that need to that feed means them. that you, you really enough. are worrying them. So, Koku, like I said, you know that per mm -hmm. your schedule, twelve, Kojo is supposed to have lunch. Yes. But now Kojo can't have lunch at 12 for reason yes. being that we are at the hospital okay so lunch will go to one because mm. i can i will be mm. home by one mm. then it means that for that one hour kweku needs or kojo needs to be cushioned okay so then at 12 o'clock because it's your normal lunch time we can give you a little substitute yes, yes. just, just to, to cushion you okay. and prevent koku or kojo from, from crying okay. or or, or being being stabbed. You okay. don't need to stab a child. Right. Okay. And you don't feed ko Kojo to the point where Kojo yeah. is so full. Now full, you can't take the you one o'clock meal. Because lunch has mm. to be taken. Mm. That isn't lunch. It's, it's okay. inadequate. Okay. My other question is, you know we have sugary foods, salty foods, yeah. peppery foods, and all of that going on. And the child is going to acquire tastes, right? You said earlier on, introduction of sugary foods at the beginning is actually quite harmful because now they're going to get used to that and they're going to start turning down the other savory foods. What is your recommendation in terms of <clears throat> when to introduce sugary foods? And I'm asking sugary foods in particular because it seems to be the biggest yes. problem yes. You know, of all. That yes. if it comes too early, it throws things. So at what point do you begin to allow them to start sampling sugary foods it should come in just like we all, we all would want to have let's say our morning uh, white porridge what we call pampa or cocoa okay. or house cocoa mm. or anything at that age six months the baby is supposed to eat the family meals whatever you are eating baby so what, can okay. eat but you need to make sure they are not getting the spices like you will have as an adult mm. so normally i'll tell mothers okay so when preparing the soup before you add the the the, the pepper me mm. i can feed a child with my soup mm. but i have friends in fact after eating their soup i i virtually cry yeah so for such a mother i had some yesterday oh cool, cool. <laughs> I can, I can have stomach upset for days. Yeah. So if you are a mother or a father or a parent yeah. like that, you need to make sure you are fetching the child's own before you pump all those things okay. into it. Because we need them to be having the meat in their system. What mm. do you do if it's liver or salmon? You can just mash it into that yam and then add some of the soup. 
mm. with no spice. If it's a natural spice, why not? But if it's the boiling cubes, yeah. then it means that it contains something monosodium glutamate, which is not even good for you as an adult. Mm. Come to think of Much less a, a child. child. Okay. So you make sure you do everything in moderation. So what I say is that, oh, they can eat the white porridge with no sugar, mm. but make sure it is done in such a way. When we were young, they put the sugar in the food on fire to make sure everything they say that be beyond on it so that everything will just go in but make sure sometimes you taste food and you you can you can feel the sugar yeah. make sure everything is done in moderation because sugar is for energy and energy is in mm. the white porridge in itself okay. so make sure it's done in bits but what we are saying is that you make sure a child is eating from a variety of foods. Make sure the child is eating from the family pots. Okay. I definitely want to ask you about children and vegetables, but we don't have enough time uh, to do that today. So I will definitely have to have that conversation. Mash them, um, cowboy, and really, blend. Really? That's a trick. No matter what, whatever you need to make sure <clears throat> it stays in there, like carrots, I can decide to boil them in the soup because there are, there are no spice. I just mm. want to add on to the taste. I can boil it and then blend it. It will look like live soup. Okay. They will see you eating live okay. soup. They're also eating live soup. Okay. Eat what you give your children. That is what I will say finally. If what you are eat, if the, what the child is eating, you can't eat, <laughs> then it's, 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 it's wrong. Give your children what you eat. <clears throat> Feed them from the family pot. Thank you very much, Akusia uh, Konedu Yadom. She's so a sure. state registered nutritionist and she's been helping us My to handles. understand how to handle our children who are picky eaters. Feed them from <clears throat> the family pot. Well, Akusia, where can we find you? Okay, so on Instagram, it's okay. the nutritionist Akusia. Okay. Yes, and then on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Nutritionist Akosia, and then you can call me if you have challenge a challenge on zero two four three three five zero two zero six. Super. Well, we've been talking to Akosia Kunidi Adam, and um, it's been a wonderful segment. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from seven thirty a.m. to ten. Join us for breakfast. Daily, only on City TV.